OK, so if you have a graph of y equals cos x and a graph of y equals tan x, and you find a point where the two functions intersect each other, like here, then it turns out that the gradient of the tangent to y equals tan x at that point where they intersect is going to be the golden ratio, phi. So this seems really mysterious. Where does the golden ratio come from? Well, it turns out that this problem is set up with the two functions, so that the derivative of tan x at the point where the two intersect each other, it's going to satisfy a certain quadratic equation. So the equation is u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0. So one of the solutions to this equation is the golden ratio. So if we want to find the derivative of y equals tan x, we just need to differentiate tan with respect to x. So we can do this, for example, using the quotient rule. We get sec squared x, which we'll just write as 1 over cos squared x. And now we need to find where do the two functions actually intersect each other. So we're just solving tan x equals cos x, and then we'll be able to substitute in to find the gradient at this point. So splitting up tan into sin x over cos x is equal to cos x. This allows us to multiply by cos on both sides. We get sin x is now equal to cos squared x. And at this point, we can actually notice that the gradient is 1 over cos squared x, the gradient of tan that we're interested in. So then we know that 1 over cos squared x is actually equal to 1 over sin x at this point where they intersect. So 1 over sin x is equal to 1 over cos squared x, and this is equal to the gradient of y equals tan x at the point where they intersect. So this is really useful now because now when we go into solving this, we can write cos squared x just as 1 minus sine squared x, using that cos squared x plus sine squared x is always equivalent to 1. And then at this point, in order to find the gradient, we could actually just find what is 1 over sine x at this point. We don't even need to find the value of x. So if we divide through everything here by sine squared x, we get on the left-hand side 1 over sine x, and now this is equal to 1 over sine squared x, we've divided through by sine squared x, and then we just get minus 1 when we divide the sine squared x by itself. So now we can rearrange this, we get on the left hand side 0 equals 1 over sine squared x, which I'll write as 1 over sine x all squared, minus the 1 over sine x term, and finally just minus 1. So you can see this does indeed satisfy our quadratic u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0. So then we can say that the variable 1 over sine x, which we're solving for, for this quadratic, is indeed equal to, if you solve this, you get a half plus or minus root 5 over 2. And now the positive solution here is the golden ratio. But what about the negative solution? Well, we can actually rule out the negative solution here, because we know that 1 over sine x at this point where the two functions intersect each other is equal to 1 over cos squared x, so we have to take the positive solution then. So then you can see that 1 over sine x is indeed equal to the golden ratio. And as we've just seen, 1 over sine x equals 1 over cos squared x, which is the gradient. So we can indeed say that the gradient of tan x at a point where tan x and cos x meet each other is indeed the golden ratio. And we can use this same idea of setting up so that the gradient of one function satisfies this quadratic equation at the point where the two functions intersect each other to come up with more examples. So here's a nice example using hyperbolic trig functions. So if we've got the graph of y equals hyperbolic sine of x and the graph of y equals hyperbolic cot of x, and we find a point where these two intersect, it turns out that the gradient of hyperbolic sine of x at that point is going to be the golden ratio again. So we can quickly verify this. If we have hyperbolic sine x, the gradient of this, if we differentiate hyperbolic sine, we just get hyperbolic cos of x. So now we need to find when do these two functions actually intersect each other. So we set up hyperbolic sine of x equals hyperbolic cot of x, which we can write in fractional form as hyperbolic cos x divided by hyperbolic sine of x. And then we multiply by hyperbolic sine of x on both sides, we get a hyperbolic sine squared x equals hyperbolic cos x. And then we get a slightly different identity with the sine squared and cos squared. So the identity for hyperbolics is hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is always equivalent to 1. And then this rearranges to tell you then that 
hyperbolic sine squared x is always going to be equivalent to hyperbolic cos squared x minus 1. So then we can just replace this by hyperbolic cos squared x minus 1 on the left hand side is equal to hyperbolic cos x. And then we can just take all of this onto the left hand side. We get hyperbolic cos squared x minus hyperbolic cos x minus 1 equals 0. And you see we've got this hyperbolic cos satisfies our u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0 quadratic equation. So once again we see that hyperbolic cos x or our gradient is going to be a half plus or minus root 5 over 2. But we need to eliminate this negative possibility of the solution there. But just remember that we've got cos hyperbolic cos x is equal to hyperbolic sine squared x, so it's going to have to be positive. So hyperbolic cos actually can't be that negative root. So we can conclude then that the gradient, which is hyperbolic cos, because it can't take a negative value because it's equivalent to hyperbolic sine squared, the gradient is indeed equal to the golden ratio, or 5, this half plus root 5 over 2. So following a similar idea of trying to set out your functions so that the derivative of one of them at a point where they intersect satisfies this quadratic equation, it's possible to come up with more examples as well like this.